out, uh, all of you that are visiting with us today, I'm excited, just getting back from a trip to Mexico, and um, we're down in the Mexico City Church, so I bring you great greetings from Carlos and Lucy Mejia, who lead that church, and the Latin American conference that we had down there last week, where our Latin brothers and sisters came from all over Central and South America. It was a powerful day. It was incredible to see God moving in 73 churches in 33 countries on all six populated continents of the world. I would say God is with his movement and it's awesome. But I have to say I missed you guys. Yeah, I missed you. Yeah, 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 I did. I, you know, I, you, yeah, that's, yeah, you know, Pat. I miss Pat, and uh, you know, you know, you know how much you, you love something when it's not there. Yeah. And so, being down in Mexico, although I love being there for the conference, I did miss all of you guys. Amen. Uh, Ash, I'm sorry, Avery is there. I got so many daughters, and they're all named A. But Avery <laughs> is there in Mexico City. She'll be at school at UNAM doing a semester of school there, and then uh, and she's also working as an intern on campus. Uh, she'll be building a new Mercy program down there as well. And uh, then she'll come back and head back to USC to get back into that medical school program. So I'm looking, uh, uh, she was scared to death when I was leaving. She, she, uh, she was looking at me. I mean, she was just tagging along. She was all over me. And uh, she said, oh, Dad, OK, you're leaving. I go, yeah, I am, you know. And uh, but she called me yesterday. She said, Dad, this is awesome. I'm going to grow so much here. Come on. This, I am really happy that you allow me to come down here and be a part of the church here. This is so amazing. And I felt good. And, um, you know, it's been that kind of response and different things that's prompted me to uh, teach on what I'm going to be teaching for the next several weeks. Um, we're we're going to go on a little journey together. And it's just called spiritual growth. Uh, you, 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 there are different signs of when you need to grow spiritually, but we also have to define what spiritual growth is. And we have to do some, but first, I want to share a few things. Okay. We need spiritual growth because the Christian community, the collaborative church here in the Chicago land area, is not growing. There is a need for Christian minded people. Come on, bro. To step up into their place of leadership in their church, in the church, and in the community. We must understand that God created the church, the body of Christ, from sacrificing, of course, his son, but he did that for our salvation. And so the purpose of the church is to bring about the salvation of the community that it is in. I'm reading these headlines every day in the community. Where I was raised here on the west side. Where some of the places I ran the streets on the south side. Where I lived up north. I've lived all over this city. And in a lot of the suburbs. And what I've seen is just an erosion. A moral decay that continues to take place. Unfortunately... I wish I could say that same erosion and a moral decay is not happening in the churches. Today I want to speak to us about growing spiritually so it doesn't happen to us. Our world as we know it is eroding at an alarming rate. Even the church. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I, when I first moved back here, I, I, was, um, I got lost going up to my dad's house. But I got lost trying to get back home, too. Now, one thing I learned about Chicago, if I get lost, just head east. I, if I can get to Lakeshore Drive, I'm good. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If I can get down to Lakeshore Drive, I'm good. I know I, know, I got my bearings right. I know I'm going east or west or whatever, but I got to get to the water. If I can get to the water, I'm good. Well, this particular time I'm taking, I'm coming back, I get lost, I start heading east, and I go down Belmont Avenue. No, you did. Yes, I did. <laughs> Now, when I say, what is the significance of Belmont? Well, Belmont, you know, Boys Town or whatever that is, is over there. And I'm riding down the street. And I'm just cruising, you know, minding my own business, lost, trying to get to the water. I started seeing things yeah, you did. that just did not seem right. 
And you, you and you know, I started doing double takes. Like, I didn't just see that, did I? And you know, in, in our American society, everything goes now. And I saw men, men, and women, women. Not very many women, but men, men. And but that was the same thing I saw in Mexico City. I'm sitting down eating. We're sitting down eating. We were we were looking at it over and over. And then I had the opportunity to meet some folks um, from different denominational churches. And now there's an acceptance of homosexuality, even in the pulpit. Wow. And I started thinking, this is, this is craziness. Now, I'm all for, hey, you know, acceptance and all that stuff. But as a Christian, what I accept is the word of God. If I don't accept that, then I'm not Christian. You can have freedom of expression, but that's your expression. As a Christian, I must have freedom of Christian expression. And I express that which is Christ-like. So we need to be a catalyst to spiritual growth. So that we can learn to love more, have more compassion, to teach in love more, teach truth in love more. So that we can be more effective for the Lord. For his church was built in order to bring salvation to mankind. Are you growing, question for you, are you growing spiritually this morning? Are you? Well, I saw that my reaction to certain situations um, that's happened over the last couple weeks were very unspiritual. I, I felt some different angers and responded to peop some people in an ungodly way. It made me check myself. Am I growing spiritually? You know, Jesus said to return all evil with good, right? They slap you, turn the other cheek, right? Sacrifice, serve, give all you have. And here I was with these emotions that were going on that did not suggest that me, a preacher, was growing spiritually. And I had to repent. Amen. So the way I repented is I wrote this series on spiritual growth. Amen. And uh, now, this is what I need you to do. <laughs> I want y'all to go on a journey with me during this series right here. Help me stay repentant. And if you need to repent in the area, I want you to repent too. Amen. I don't want you to just hear a lesson and just hang out and go, it was good, bad. I don't need a critique. What I need is your application of the word of God this morning so that we can change this community that we live in and stop the erosion of these communities and perhaps even the world. I want to talk about the spiritual, uh, spiritual growth because spiritual growth is a decision. It is a personal decision. No one can do it for you. Your relationship with God, that's a personal decision. No one can do that for you. Your faith in God, that is a personal decision. No one can have faith for you. All of this is about what you decide personally. Spiritual growth is your decision. You say, I'm not spiritual. Make a decision to be spiritual. I'm not joyful. Make a decision to be joyful. I, I, I'm not being effective. Make a decision to grow and be spiritual and have effect. So understand that. That's, that's number one, that spiritual growth is a personal decision. When we were baptized into Christ, in Romans 6, if you go there with me, in verse 4. Now, I'm going to share several scriptures this morning. Okay, and some of you say, boy, bro, you go a little fast sometime. Well, today I'm going to go a little bit faster because I got a lot of scripture I want to share with you. I like the Bible to speak to us. So if you miss something, then just write the scripture down. If you want my notes, then just email me and you can have them. But I need us intently in the word of God this morning. You guys with me? Amen. Romans 6 verse 4 says, we were therefore buried with him. Who is him? Jesus. We were buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, right, through the glory of our Father, we too may live a new life. What is this saying right here? Not only were we given redemption or salvation, but the opportunity to live a new life. Yeah. Yeah. To be different than our old self. To grow. To change. You, ever, you, you know, we wouldn't have an excuse without Jesus. I just can't change this. I can't go, no, no, no. 
That was the reason for the death. Your salvation and your continued evolving into being like Jesus. You absolutely have the power to be like Jesus. In fact, you're called to be like Jesus. It involves our, our rebirth. It implies over and over spiritual growth. Now, just as healthy physical life is one of growth, in other words, if you had a baby that was born, anybody like new babies? Don't, don't they smell good? Yes. New babies just smell. You ever heard of a new baby? Just, they just smell good, don't they? Just smell all good and everything. I mean, they haven't even, you know, had a stank stank yet. They just smell good and everything. You love them. We was all cute little, you know, little babies. I mean, a little baby, you look at so innocent, so pure. You know, wow, look at the baby. You know, and everything they do is cool. Now, take that same baby that was just born. Go away, come back 10 years later. The baby has not grown. It is the same adorable, cute, sweet-smelling, pure little baby. You would go, this ain't cute, adorable, sweet smelling no more. Something wrong with this baby. So physical growth has a process that is very, very evident. You see it. You, you see it. This is what we get. It's not about what someone says they are. It's about what they do. You can say a lot of things. You can say I care and be completely unloving. You, you, you can say I'm a generous person and be completely ungiving. Yeah. So it's about the process. You can see it in a physical sense, but there's also a process, a spiritual process in the spiritual growth of a Christian. Yeah. Here's the deal though. Tragically, not all Christians are growing. Right. Not all. Many have been Christians for years with little or no improvement. There are more, off, more often or less likely to be useful to the Lord than when they first became Christians. Wow. Failing to grow is like a stagnant pool of water. It's full of dead bugs. And all when they go to plant their, their children, the afterbirth of that, that they go on from that pool of water to become the annoying insects and things that they can be. That is because it's stagnant, but that is because spiritual growth is a decision. It does not happen by default. If you're not feeling, today you should, you should be as fired up about your Christianity as at any other time in your entire life. If not, you're not growing. You're not growing. Come on, Corey. It is very clear in this new birth that we're to be renewed. The Bible says daily. Come on, Corey. But it is a decision to do so. It does not happen. I don't care how so and so is spiritual or what they do, it has no bearing on you. The work must be done by you. It must be done. You know, it's interesting. The diet, the whole diet, nutrition world, it's like billions of dollars in industry. And it's bought by people that feel that, you know, they may need to lose some weight, get in some shape, get healthy. And that industry just keeps growing and growing. And most of those people don't do anything with the food or the nutrition. Wow. And it just keeps growing that industry. Why is that? Because they want to, but they haven't made a decision to. It is. I want to be spiritual. I want to grow in the Lord. I want to have more faith. I want to, I, I want to, I want to, I want. That's kind of how it is. I want to. I want to be more for God. I want to be, I want to live a pure life. I want to be cleaner. Wanting anything don't mean you get it. You have to go after it. Now, if we don't make a decision to grow spiritually, then we won't. It's as simple as that. But here's the, the kicker. Yep. If you don't make the decision to grow, then you will be ineffective 
and unproductive as a Christian. Why is that important to us as a congregation? You know, you sit in a room that's, the, 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 it just keeps growing. Just keeps growing. There's a whole other service downstairs. We now have five regions throughout Chicago Metroland. Thriving regions. In which you are the, the, the spiritual ceiling of your group, if you will. And if we don't grow spiritually as individuals, then collectively we can become very ineffective and unproductive. Yep. I rolled through one community of where all, a lot of the danger and trouble is and everything like that. Very sad. But what saddened me more was that it was over inundated with churches. So many churches. I mean, it was signified that there are hundreds of people in those buildings. Hundreds, supposedly hundreds and hundreds. You got big ones and hundreds of, I mean, this community is just hundreds and hundreds of Christians. How can it be on the list of the highest murder rate? How can teen pregnancy be that high in a community of so-called Christians? Yeah. Something's wrong with this picture. Yeah. Right. Something's wrong. And I don't believe it is what our Lord intended when he gave up his life. Come on, bro. So I'd like to discuss a few things with you Come on. about spiritual growth. It is a personal decision. I pray you will decide to grow spiritually. That you will say to yourself, where I'm at today, I won't be tomorrow. Where I'm at tomorrow, I won't be next week. And where I'm at next week, not next month, and where next month, I won't be next year. And I will grow and grow into the Lord, and my life will be productive in the Lord. Amen. Now, let's, let's understand some things here. Point one, and I'm, I'm going to give you a few points so it's real clear. Make it clear, bro. Point number one, spiritual growth is a decision commanded by God. We think we have a, 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 a choice, don't we? I could take it or leave it. That's how some of us think about the scriptures. I could take it or leave it. But see, that's why the world of Christianity tends to be incomplete because we have Christians that will take or leave whatever they want. And the Bible says all scripture is God-breathed. And is useful for teaching, correcting, and training. Even rebuking in righteousness so that the man of God may be what? Thoroughly. Exactly. So the whole thing. You can't treat God's word as a smorgasbord, I like this and I don't like that. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff in there, ain't it? Yeah. But you got to eat it all. You can't pick and choose what you eat. So number one, understand this, that your spiritual growth is a decision that you're commanded to make by God. Look at Matthew 28 with me. Come on, bro. <laughs> Matthew 28. Now, early on, I'll go a little slower, but as I share a bunch of stuff, I'm going to have to speed up these scriptures. This, this, is, uh, this is out of my repentance. <laughs> so there's a lot going on. Lord led me on a journey. Amen. Matthew 28, very familiar to you, of course. In verse 18, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I love that because that is everything. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always until the very end of the age. Now, here Jesus commands all the disciples, his apostles and everybody, sends them out. And he says to go make disciples. This was the command, the last command of Christ before he would ascend into heaven. And he says, go and make disciples. That right there, go is a command. But then he says, baptize them. So in other words, you only baptize disciples. Yep. Anything else, you're just getting wet. All right? And so, and then he says, teach. teach. Wow. Probably the most over or underlooked at word in this whole passage. Oh, yeah. wow. Come on, bro. The implied meaning here of teach as well, the command to teach, is that disciples, those that would be taught, would be obedient learners. Come on. Come on, Corey. Yeah, come on. Obedient learners. Oftentimes what we find is negotiators with the word of God. <laughs> Negotiators. They 
don't negotiate with God. Well, I, you know, that, they'll say, so, you know, that's way back then. He didn't mean that now, not for me. No, 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 that's your interpretation. No, no, that's what it say, man. I ain't made no interpretation. I'm too afraid to speak where God speaks. See, I'm quiet where God speaks, and I may say something where he doesn't, but other than that, I'm just going to obey what he says. And he says that I am to be taught. Amen. Are you an obedient learner or not? Peter writes it this way. He says he wants us to do some other things, so we got to be obedient learners. But he says in 2 Peter 3, verse 18, he says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and forevermore. You know, we are commanded even to grow in grace, not just grow, but in grace. What is grace necessary for when you mess up? Because you're going to fall short. We all fall short. What does Romans 3.23 says? All has fallen short. The glory of God, right? Everyone. There's no such thing as a perfect Christian or someone that has arrived at perfection. I need grace all the time, man. This whole thing is written because I've seen the grace of God in my life. I can be wicked at times and God is still gracious. That is grace. Now here's the thing. Do you accept the grace? How do you know? Because you get repentant, you get fired up, you get back in the game out of God's love for you. People that stay down in their sin, don't want to deal with their sin, that, that, that person doesn't know the first thing about grace. Doesn't know anything about grace. This fear of God. Look, let me tell you something. Anything you put before God, you have repented of, God will forgive you. What many of us need to learn to do is forgive ourselves and stop walking around down and low self-esteem. You are not going to ever be perfect, but you can be perfectly saved as long as you remain in the covering of Jesus Christ. So grow in the grace of God. Grow. Live fired up. I'm thankful there's a net to catch me. It says we are to grow in the knowledge. This is the reason why we don't grow in grace, because we don't grow in the knowledge. You understand that? You think God's got this big yielding wrath gun or big hammer waiting to knock you out because you messed up. You know, well, God don't get me. I done messed up. He don't want me no more. No. See, here, this will, I hope this don't scare you too much. It's never an issue if you search yourself deep down that you really feel that God won't forgive me. No, the issue is, is you won't repent. And you know without repentance, you can't have the grace of God. Come on now. It ain't that. That's what the real issue is. You just know you're not going to repent. You don't want to give up that hatred or that anger or that bitterness or immorality. You, you're not broken by it. So you're going, well, God ain't going to forgive me. He don't love me. No, you don't want to repent because you know the scriptures teach God's grace. Peter writes a second time and he says this in 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 5. Now check what he says out. He says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, we, we must always be adding to these spiritual qualities our knowledge of Jesus. That means understanding how he operated, how he thought in all of these situations. To do so means you've got to make a decision to learn all about him. Right. And he says, it's commanded of us right. to know about Jesus. Yep. Now Christians in the scriptures here who did not grow, because some of them, you know, you know what we do. We go, eh, I'm on my pace. You know, I got time to get to that one. Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, y'all look at me like, dang. <laughs> you know, I'm going to work on that one. He, he just don't understand. I, I got this. I'm on it. I'm on it. But Christians that did not grow spiritually were sternly rebuked. See, it's a command. When you give a command and it's not obeyed, what happens? There's some kind of consequence. Christians who did not grow were sternly rebuked. Look over Hebrews 5 with me. Come on, Come on, bro. Come on. Turn, on turn on, flip the tablets, your phone, whatever it is that you do. Let's get going. We need the word of God here if we're going to grow spiritually, right? 
You don't need a humanistic uh, viewpoint of this. You need uh, a biblical one. And right here, they got their tails rebuked for not growing. Hebrews 5, chapter 12. And he starts off, you know, you ever had this? In fact, you know, you've been doing all this and all that. But no, in fact, let me tell you what you really are. In fact, by this time, you ought to be teachers. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Now, the word righteousness, let's catch that. Not acquainted with righteousness. Here's what he's saying. Not acquainted with the right relationship with God. Because that is what the word means. So those on milk, staying in that elementary truth of things, don't understand the relationship with God. Wow. Come on, bro. They don't understand it. And odds are they look at it like they do humanistic relationships. And they don't see the holiness in the relationship with God. Anyone, listen to me say, anyone who lives on milk they're still living is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Just go over to chapter 6, verse 1 right there. It's a little bit, just one page, really. He says, therefore, there's that word. Jesus said, uh, all authority in heaven and earth is given to you. Therefore, it becomes a command. It, it's, it's authoritative. Therefore, let us move on. Can't we cut it out as Christian folks acting just like they do? Knowing that we got the power of God on our side. Come on, Come on. Can we stop denying him? Can we stop being told to be pure? Can, can, can we stop being told the elementary teachings about our immorality? Come on. Our bitternesses. Our, our, our lackadaisicalness when it comes to the work of God. Come on. The sacrifice that's called from us. We, we, we're abounding on missions, mission for what? Because we want to terrorize everybody? <laughs> no, we want to win the world. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Come on. And you know, our missions uh, funds that we give this year, that goes to sustain work already done. Very little of that goes to anything new. That's right. That's that goes to the church down in Lagos. The churches in Africa that just sprung up and are now 500 or more. Down in Haiti. Yeah. Haiti. The team that will go out to Hong Kong from Sydney. Do you know Mexico City a year ago when Carlos and Lucy took it over, in the beginning of 2016 was 50 disciples. Today it sits at 150. Come on. 50 disciples became 150 disciples in one year. What can 119 disciples in June when we started become by June of this year? Come on. Come on. Come on. And you, you think I'm asking too much? Let's multiply our church. Why? So we can make a difference. Yeah. 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 We have a misunderstanding of what church is all about. We think it's what we're supposed to get. People come to church to get rich. They come to church to get stuff and all of that. But they forget, really, you've come to church so that you can do what? Glorify God by carrying out his will. And so Peter says, yeah, let's move beyond this. And be taken forward to maturity. This is not all about us as individuals. It has everything to do with God. Not laying again the same foundation of repentance. The same thing over and over. The acts that lead to death. Yeah. And even a faith in God. Do I believe in God? Yeah. Let us not teach that again, but let us mature. Spiritual growth is not an option reserved for a select few. Right. They're spiritual. Yeah. Oh, no. It is command for all of us. Point two. Spiritual growth is a decision that requires maximum effort. It requires everything you have. Unlike physical growth that happens, you're going to grow no matter what. And if you don't, then something must be wrong, as we talked about earlier. There's no effort required. You're going to grow and grow old. You know, you're going to grow and grow and lose your hair like Chris Wooden. You know, or good boss boss like Pat. Yeah. You know, him and Brewer, you know. Or you, or 
all your organs go white like mine. <laughs> Either way, you're going to grow. It's going to happen, right? You're going to grow. But don't think that just because you grow older, you are growing spiritually. Spiritual growth is in what you do. Your, in, in, your, in light of your circumstance, environments, and so forth. And it requires maximum effort. It ain't easy. Nope. It is not easy. Uh-uh. Right. You, 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 listen to this. Jesus said, look, it requires labor. Look in John 6, yeah. verse 27. He says, do not work for food that spoils. Like, in other words, work. Things that are going to go bad and go away. But for food that endures. Yeah eternal life which the son of man will give you for in him God the father has placed his seal of approval Paul comes next and he writes this the apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 therefore my dear friends as you have always obeyed not only in my presence but now much more in my absence continue to work out your salvation with what fear and trembling look what he says in chapter 3 Verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but I do one thing. Remember that? I do one thing, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. He says, I strain and I press. That's his effort. I'm working at this. You know, part of the problem, we, we, we want all the spiritual blessings, but none of the spiritual work. Man, we want to feel fired up, clean, refreshed, and pure, but we don't want to do what's necessary. You know, it's, it's incredible how we have become, we, we'll say that about the world, they're entitled. But it's incredible how we've become entitled inside the church. That, you know, this is supposed to just happen. Come on. And yet Paul, Paul, you got to remember who he was. Most learned guy around him. Wealthiest guy around him. All the different things that came along with Paul. And when he became a Christian, he understood something. That I got to forget all that's behind me. And I got to press. I've got to strain toward that which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Come on. Peter wrote, for this reason make every effort. 2 Peter 1, verse 5 and then 10. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge. Verse 10, therefore, my brother and sisters, make every effort. He does it twice in the same passage to confirm your calling and election. And if you do these things, you will not stumble. So why are so many Christians fumble or stumbling? Because they're not doing these things. Right. They're not adding. Yep. They've not made the decision to grow spiritually. Now, what I do believe a lot of us has done is we made decisions to survive. Yep. And yet the Bible calls us victorious. And we live in victory. Not survive this world. We dominate this thing. Right. Come on. Because of the Christ we have living inside of us. Just like physical exercise to get in shape requires exercise, so does spiritual. Yeah. Your spiritual life to get in shape. Timothy, Paul tells Timothy, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives tell. Rather train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both this present life and the life to come. It is not easy, spiritual growth, to become stronger spiritually. It is not easy, and then it is very difficult. And so that's why we have relationships. We call them discipleship partners, and, you know, they use the term mentorship and all these kinds of things, because it's hard. You know, that is something you should go after in your life is your relationship that way. You know, we're in Mexico City. It was great to sit down and be with Kip and Elena who, you know, of course they disciple G and I and, you know, and he's around at all the uh, Crown of Thorn churches. I don't see him very much. And so just happened to be going down to this conference in Mexico was awesome because I got to get some extra time. <laughs> but one thing about me is I know I need help. I've not arrived at who I want to be or who I'm going to be when this is, by the time this is all over. Do you go after it? 
you, you, you do like most and wait. Uh, they better come after me. Yeah. Come on. Come on. What do you do? You know, let me tell you something. You can be overweight and want to lose weight. Sit there and wait for someone to come lose weight for you. <laughs> Go on and sit and wait. See what happens. No, you will push away from the table. You will get you some running shoes. You stay out that kitchen. You will stay out of Harold's and Popeyes, Uncle Remus, Giordano's, Gino's East. You know, you're going to stay away. And until you do, Nothing is going to change with you physically. All right. So now we understand you got to make a personal decisions. We understand, number one, that it is commanded by God. Now, we also need to understand this. Spiritual growth is a decision that is assisted by God. If you really want it and go after it, God will help you. We are not alone in our efforts. We're not alone because we have each other. The most spiritual time two people can have is when they open the Bible together. You can call that whatever kind of time you want. But you will grow yeah. if you do that. <laughs> if you're an obedient learner. Amen. You can't just read. Many people read the Bible. Yeah. But remember we talked about three kinds of faith. Yeah. Yeah. So many people read the Bible and they come to an intellectual thing. They understand what they just read. Wow, that's interesting. And people treat the word like that, right? Wow, that is so cool. That is interesting. Very interesting what I'm reading. This is so interesting. <laughs> wow. You know? And that's dead, right? Because it doesn't produce change. But then, but then you got those that feel it. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm feeling this. Oh, man, this experience of mine is, oh. But even the demons felt like that. And what did they do? Shut up. They were scared, right? But we learned something about this kind of faith, didn't we? About the mind and just the emotional. It doesn't lead to maturity. And often it leads to death. But we need the super faith. Yeah. And it involves a third element. Our will. Yeah. Our willingness to obey what we read. Right. Here it is. We get cut and go, yep. yep. That's what I'm doing. Exactly. I'm going to do exactly what God just said to me to do. That's right. yeah. Amen. There ain't no hesitation there no more. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be obedient. That's it. Amen. Now when you make that decision, that's when God will assist you. Yep. Look at Philippians 2 with me. Verse 12. We coming in for a landing, but I thought these scriptures would be helpful to your spiritual growth. At least I hope they are. But they'll mean nothing if you don't do it. It may sound good to you. It may feel something towards you, but it won't change you until you put your will in the obedience of the scriptures. Amen. Yeah. Philippians 2 verse 12. All right. Therefore, my dear friends, you know you're getting set up too. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only my presence, but now, now look at that. So in his presence obey, right? But he says now much more in what? Absolutely. That is where your true Christianity is, when nobody sees you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on right here. He said, and not that mess you show everybody, I'm a good, I'm a good Christian. <laughs> you know, it's them private thoughts. Oh, yeah. It's them actions that no one sees. He says, you obeyed in my presence, but now I want you to obey even more in my absence. Continue to work out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Woo! For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. There it is. Your will must be submitted to his will if he's to assist you. We want God to assist us. You know, God, help me. Do it could be even unrighteous. Help me, God. Let me get this girl. They ain't my wife, but let me get this girl. Oh, my goodness. Jake. You know, let me get this tax money back that I know I cheated on. Hello. I know it's tax season. Yeah. Don't do it. I know it's up. Don't do it. Don't do it. It ain't righteous. Give the Caesar what Caesar's. But we ask God, don't let me get caught. Right? Yeah, I know it is, right? I don't get caught, God. Help me. Help me deceive everybody. <laughs> now, we can't think that way because God does desire to complete the work he started in us when he saved us. 
In Philippians 1, verse 6, it says, Being confident of this, that he, and again, he is God, who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We are strengthened by God in our efforts to be godly. Yeah. And he strengthened us by his spirit in our inner being, our inner man. When we're baptized in Acts 2, 38, it says that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. We receive it yeah. according to scripture. I don't know about all that feeling stuff. Yeah. I know what the Bible says here. Yeah. Amen. Come on, bro. That spirit, of course, is one of the three manifestations of God. It's placed inside you to aid you in living a godly life. In Ephesians 3.16, he puts it like this. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. He empowers us with unimaginable power. Ephesians 3.20. For God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that works where? In us. We make the decision and God will help you. That's right. Yeah. Come on. He even provides an armor to protect you as you go through your process. Ephesians 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. The reality of it is there is no excuse not to grow. There's only callousness of heart and laziness of foot. With God as our aid, spiritual growth is possible. Overcoming the things we want to is possible. And it won't be mediocre. It will be divine. And finally, spiritual growth is a decision that is blessed by God. You got to make that decision. It's commanded. It's assisted. But it's also blessed. It's also blessed. And that blessing is in this life and the next. In this life, it teaches us, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and be the glory both now, now. That means your life can be the best right now. You don't have to wait for heaven to get everything. What are some of the things we get when we have this, when we're, when we're on this spiritual journey and we grow? Well, we get a peace with God. Peace. You, are you stressed out? You need to get on this spiritual journey. Romans 5, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. When we grow, we have peace. When we grow, we have victories in our life. Second Peter. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and lecture. For if you do, you will not stumble. Oh, when we go for this spiritual growth, you will not stumble. And in fact, John 10, 10 says that you will be able to have the abundant life that Jesus promised you. He said, I want you to have what? Life to the what? Full. How full are you? Come on. That's what Jesus wants. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Right now. So you have the blessings of God in this life, but in the life to come. And he says, this is out of your life to come. You'll be received into the heavens where everything that we need or want is waiting. He says this, we will have an abundant interest. Look at 2 Peter. I love this passage. On, God, I hope they do this for me. Come on, bro. In 2 Peter chapter 1, and he says, you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Man, I hope they is just, come on in. Don't you want to see Jesus? Come on, yes. He's at the door. I've been waiting on you. Come on. I got you a seat right here. now. I got you a whole room. I got you a house. I got, I got, I got everything. No more tears. I got everything for you. I've been waiting on you. You my man. I hope I can hear Jesus say something like that to me. I better keep growing. I better keep growing. 
So let me, let me close this out here. So we know, and this is on the serious side, spiritual growth. As a congregation, we must make some decisions to grow spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. You must make a decision today. Amen. If you're visiting, if you, I don't know where anybody's relationship is with Christ, I don't know. But I do know that we all need to grow. Yeah. Maybe you don't know Christ in the way that you should. You make a decision. He has studied the Bible. I've tried to use so many scriptures that let you understand that wisdom is not wisdom that's from man. That wisdom is only truly wisdom when it is read from the scriptures. Yeah. It's the kind that counts. Mm -hmm. And the Bible is calling you and I, whether you know him or not, to grow spiritually. Yeah. Now, we've been talking about growth. We've been talking about growth, but not all growth is good. Let me share a few of these. The Bible teaches us in Matthew 13, 15. Let's see if you recognize any of this by the world that we live in. He says, the hearts of some grow dull. Not good growth. Matthew 24, 12. The love of many grow cold. Not good growth. Paul says, there's a danger of growing weary in doing good. That's not good growth. He says again in Ephesians, there's a possibility of growing corrupt according to deceitful lust. That's not good growth. Paul says to Timothy, there's a danger of growing against Christ. That's not good growth. And then he tells him again in 2 Timothy, there are those who grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Like cancer cells that grow inside of a terminally ill person, not all growth is good, is it? But we have been talking about a different kind of growth. We've been talking about a spiritual kind of growth that is commanded, requires maximum effort, is assisted by God, and is blessed by God. What kind of growth is happening in your life? Is it good growth? Is it bad growth? Is it deadly kind of growth? Creating dull hearts, love that is cold, weariness in doing good, even moral corruption? Or is it vibrant kind of growth in which it's abounding in love, joy, peace, and faithfulness, and faithful and fruitful service to our Lord? Which one is it? The first kind will be the result of neglect. It will happen simply by neglect. If we desire to experience the blessings of the right kind of growth, then never forget, spiritual growth is a decision. Are you making the right choice today? I pray you will. God bless you.